Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, this is uh, the Photonix uh, webinar. My name is uh, Anand Kashyap. I'm co-founder and CTO of Photonix, and I'll be your host for this webinar. We are very happy and excited to have uh, Vladimir Shingarev from uh, Adidas join us. Hi, Vladimir. Hello, Anand. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to and uh, looking forward to have this um, conversation. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself and your role at Adidas? Sure. Uh, my current role is Senior Information Security Architect. Uh, I'm a member of a team uh, who is in charge of uh, making sure that uh, we, we have uh, necessary technologies um, in place at Adidas uh, to support our um, security, information security program, information security control framework that we have. So uh, really working on this technical level, uh, looking for the, for the uh, uh, new technologies that are available on the market, uh, assessing the, let's say, the blind spots, the white spots that we have at Adidas, uh, what is not covered, and trying to implement those and uh, make them available for, for our Adidas technical community to use and apply. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, so today's topic for the webinar is uh, about challenges enterprises are facing in uh, implementing encryption across uh, uh, the organization for protecting the data while the data is at rest or or data is in use, and how does the uh, key management solution uh, play a part in that? So we'll go through uh, an overview of uh, the solution that uh, Photonics has built for key management, and uh, uh, Vladimir will, will walk us through how Adidas is using the solution to, uh, to implement encryption uh, in their organization. And we'll have uh, this uh, webinar structured so that it's divided into three parts. In the first part, uh, I'll talk about uh, uh, our company, uh, the product and the technology, uh, just to get us started. And the second part, uh, Vladimir will walk us uh, through the journey uh, on which Adidas embarked to implement uh, enterprise-wide encryption and uh, what are the solutions they were looking for and how uh, uh, STKMS, uh, the product that we have built, is helping us in that journey. Uh, and in the final part, uh, we'll open it up for Q&A from the audience. So with that, uh, we'll get started. So here's some background about uh, Fortanix. We are a cloud security company based in uh, Silicon Valley uh, in California. Established in 2016, um, founded by Ambush Kumar, who is our CEO, uh, and myself. And we are a Series B company. Uh, we raised our most recent round of funding led by Intel Capital. We also have funding from Incutel, uh, Foundation Capital, and Neotri Ventures. Uh, we are a group of uh, technologists uh, with people with a lot of security experience from companies like uh, Oracle, VMware, and such. Uh, and uh, we have been building uh, the technology and the product around this, uh, uh, the core um, hardware-based security technologies developed in the CPU. Uh, and towards that, uh, we have been very innovative. We have filed several patents uh, in this area as well. And here is some overview about all the products uh, that we are building uh, at Photonix. So the core of it uh, is uh, what we call the runtime encryption platform. And what runtime encryption platform lets you do is uh, secure your data throughout its life cycle, whether the data is at rest, uh, data is at motion, or the data is in use. And for data at rest and data in transit, these were considered as solved problems, but still you need to have a really good key management solution to provide keys uh, in a distributed, uh, scalable environment. And for data in use, there was no protection earlier. Uh, all the protection was built in the software, but that didn't, didn't really work very well. With the new advances in hardware security, where companies like Intel uh, have been building secure enclave technology, uh, specifically Intel SGX, the software guard extensions, it is now possible to secure data and applications by running them inside a secure enclave at runtime. And when you do that, your, all the data that goes into the memory is encrypted even at runtime, and you get much better protection than before. What Photonics has been doing is uh, building a layer on top of the hardware-based security, and we call that a runtime encryption platform, which makes it very easy for an application developer to build applications that run inside secure enclaves. Uh, you can even bring your existing applications and use our uh, software called Enclave OS 
to just drop it in inside a secure enclave and then get all the benefits from Intel SGX. Uh, we have uh, an SDK that we have built from scratch, from the ground up, uh, in the Rust programming language called Protonix EDP, or Enclave Development Platform. And that's another way to build applications inside enclaves, uh, which are built to be secure uh, and performant. And we tie everything together in the runtime execution platform using a software called Enclave Manager, where, which is used to orchestrate enclaves. Once you build enclaves, how do you make sure that you are doing remote attestation easily? How do you make sure that, they, that the enclaves can trust each other? And they can do uh, migration from one host to another. So Enclave Manager makes all of that easy. And while we build the runtime encryption platform, and it opens up many use cases around securing private data, sensitive data, uh, we also built a complete product on top of the runtime encryption platform. And that is uh, our key management product called Self-Defending Key Management Service, or SDKMS, that you see on the left in the slide. Uh, and SDKMS is a, is a unified product which combines the functionalities of uh, a hardware security module or an HSM. It's also a KMS. It also provides secrets management uh, as well as tokenization. Uh, and it is delivered uh, in multiple form factors. So it is available as a SaaS uh, product. Uh, it's available as software-only uh, product. And it's also available as a, as a physical appliance. Some more detail about uh, SDKMS, uh, because that's the, the topic of discussion for this webinar. Um, so if you look at uh, what SDKMS provides, uh, it's a unified uh, cryptographic services platform, which means it does provide all the legacy cryptographic interfaces that you expect from your traditional uh, HSMs, uh, things like PKCS11, um, CNG CAPI for Microsoft, JCE for Java, uh, KMF, which is a modern uh, uh, interoperability protocol for key management. It also provides uh, REST API, is, uh, which are all publicly documented that you can build against. And it also provides a single pane of glass where you can manage all your keys um, and access controls around the keys. Uh, and wherever your applications are or your databases are, whether they're on-prem or in the cloud, they can reach out to SDKMS and get the keys um, and encryption capabilities when, when, when they want. Uh, this is built to be scalable. SDKMS is deployed as a cluster of nodes. And the idea is uh, as you increase the size of the cluster, you get more capacity, so it's linearly scalable. You also get uh, uh, fault tolerance, disaster recovery, um, high availability, all those things are built in into the solution itself. Uh, and by combining all the different capabilities around key management, tokenization, secrets management, and such, we also bring a high level of consolidation, which does lead to reduction uh, in TCO when companies are looking for all these solutions, but they're being delivered as different products uh, in other cases. And in terms of security, the entire product, SDKMS, is built on top of the runtime encryption platform and runs inside Intel SGX based secure enclaves. Um, so, so you get uh, the, the same level of uh, security that you get from your uh, regular hardware-based uh, security modules or HSMs, um, but at the same time, you get tremendous flexibility um, because all we are doing is writing software, and we can take advantage of all the modern advances in distributed software in the last 10, 15 years, uh, make it uh, scalable, uh, we can have load balancing, uh, high availability, all those things. It's much easier to implement once you are operating in the software realm. So with that, uh, uh, that uh, concludes the first part of the webinar. Uh, this was a very short introduction about the product you're talking about. Uh, in the next part, uh, we'll, we'd like to hear uh, from Vladimir about uh, his uh, journey on using SDKMS. Uh, and before that, we'd like to learn about uh, the challenges he had uh, around encryption uh, in, inside Adidas. So to kick us off, uh, Vladimir, what, um, Walk us through your journey, you know, when did you start uh, looking at, at uh, encryption? Uh, how did you feel about protecting all the data inside the organization? What are the things you needed to encrypt? Uh, so if you can start us off with that. Yeah, certainly. Thanks, uh, Anand. Uh, and, uh, well, we, we, we've started looking at the encryption uh, let's say comprehensively and, and holistically uh, um, maybe two uh, two years ago, uh, when uh, e even before that, there were often the conversations uh, with our internal stakeholders uh, on 
on protecting the, the uh, sensitive information, right? We do understand that there is a sensitive data stored in our systems, whether it's consumer data, sales data, uh, corporate secrets, and so on and so forth. But these conversations, uh, they were very difficult in terms of, um, we, we would often come with a claim that, that this data has to be protected, yes. But we had a challenge to back this up, this, this kind of claim that uh, how exactly, uh, by what means, and uh, this conversation that, that you would need to encrypt the data often ends in a, in a, in a um, outcome, uh, which is another question, how, how, how would you protect the keys, right? And uh, in a large organization, you perhaps, uh, you, you would like to avoid the situation where uh, the, the teams, various teams and internal stakeholders decide by themselves how the keys should be managed and protected, okay? So to, to back up this claim, we decided to provide a um, key management system as one of the security services that, that we often do, uh, that, that we have uh, uh, others in our portfolio to the rest of the organization. So, uh, and this is why uh, we basically started the whole process uh, to, to search for it on the market, to, sell, uh, to uh, perform the POC and, and select the right one. Yeah, that's great. Uh, it's often said that, you know, encryption is easy, key management is hard. And so, so I understand uh, you started this process for looking for a key management solution. Uh, can you walk us through how you ran the process? What were the things you were looking for? What were the criteria for you uh, to choose the right solution that would fit the need uh, needs for Adidas? Um, like in any large organization, it's a, it's a well-formalized process, right? right? You need a couple of uh, competitors, uh, the, the external partners that would offer you a, a, a product or service to, to fulfill certain business or in this case, security need. And this is exactly what we did. Uh, we compiled a request for proposal. Um, we, we, we chose Fortanix uh, amongst other participants. And um, we just outlined the, the criteria, selection criteria, what was important for us from security, from operations perspective, uh, that, that would basically, the, um, we just put those requirements on the paper and, and this is how the process looked like, okay? So if you would ask me what was, what was the criteria uh, for the RFP, for, for, for the uh, key management system product that would, we would um, uh, purchase, that, that was um, interoperability. So for us, it was important and it is important that there should be no use case um, that we could not fulfill internally in terms of like, we, there should be no scenario that we should we would decline a request, a demand from, from our uh, application teams, uh, application owners to, to uh, secure keys or provide encryption services, right? So the, the broad interoperability, the support for standard protocols and technologies in that space, like you mentioned, PKSS 11 is there, KMIP um, is there uh, and, and uh, yeah, there are drivers for Java and uh, Windows uh, CNG sub subsystem. So all of this was important for us, and it's uh, it's being used as well as the the REST API, which uh, which uh, let's say the um, developers and, and um, experts from uh, DevOps area, so to say, love uh, work with. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, so it's like uh, you ran a formal uh, RFP uh, and you laid down the criteria for choosing uh, the right key management product uh, and interoperability was probably uh, one of the main criteria. Were there other criteria you were looking for and also uh, what were specific things about SDKMS uh, that made you choose that uh, over other competing products? 
So uh, amongst other other criteria, there were um, scalability. So uh, it, it's difficult maybe to run out of space uh, when it comes to encryption keys because they are very small, but still. Uh, the, the, maybe the last thing that you want to do is just to kind of exhaust all the, 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 the space on the appliance or server, whatever it is, uh, for, for, for encryption keys. Okay, so we wanted to scale, so to say, horizontally. Okay. Um, also, security and security of the, the key material um, what was important for us, and it's, it, it's in a matter, you know, when I say security, I actually mean transparency. So I wanted to understand how the solution works and what are the core concepts built in into the uh, into the product that provides this this uh, uh, security of the key material, so you you can never be extracted and so on. So if you look at the uh, some other products uh, on the market. HSMs at the end of the day, and, and especially like traditional HSMs, um, perhaps you cannot really tell how they work. It's it's a, some sort of the black box that's provided to you, and you just you just say you just have to trust that that it's it's secure. It's, there are no vulnerabilities inside, and you, you cannot really tell how it works. But in case of Fortanix, um, Intel SGX, the key component. There is certain software we, we where which uh, they're transparent about how it all works and and what are the components that the database uh, itself the, the web server web, web UI and and the API interfaces etc how they it all works um, that was that also played a certain role when it comes to the decision most others um, um, high availability of course. Uh, it had it had to be also cost effective. So um, some vendors supply the, the let's say the licensing model uh, per per appliance or something like that. So uh, the, it, we we had to take all of this into account. Okay, that's great. Uh, and uh, how has your experience uh, been so far since you uh, started using SDKM as uh, and uh, started integrating with uh, applications uh, inside uh, inside the organization. Uh, how easy uh, or difficult it has been to to integrate uh, with SDKMS and evangelizing it inside the organization. Uh, evangelizing that's a that's a key word, right? So the, just to purchase the product and install the system, uh, the, the, this is really not not enough. I mean unless you're really a small uh, uh, startup or something like that. So uh, the organization is changing. There's always new products, new um, solutions that, that Adidas purchases and, and installs. Uh, people come and leave and things like that. So you really need to talk about encryption and key management, if not on a daily basis, but, but on a regular basis in all of those small uh, silos and communities all over the enterprise and um, highlight the importance of this, how it contributes to the overall security of the, of the organization and how uh, it will help the, the particular stakeholder and the team to become compliant to the, to the corporate policies. Okay, so it, 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 the journey is there, it's, it's challenging, but uh, I'm very satisfied with the progress that we're making. Great, uh, and uh, and uh, SDKMS comes with uh, the standard set of uh, uh, functionalities around cryptographic services. It implements the NSS with B set of algorithms, uh, but uh, you had some specific requirements uh, for uh, some extra algorithms that needed to be supported, and uh, we were able to to support that uh, using the plugin functionality that we have, which allows us to build custom. Uh, cryptographic uh, algorithms or custom uh, workload and run it inside a secure execution environment inside SDKMS. Um, so can you talk about uh, a little bit about what your requirement was, what you were looking to do, and how did uh, we support you on that? Yeah, you, you are right, Anand. It's, uh, it was very um, yeah, interesting and exciting uh, project. 
uh, I, I would agree that it's a custom algorithm. When it comes to when it comes to cryptography, I think it, maybe it's a, it's a bad thing to do custom. Uh, so actually, what happened is uh, Adidas is doing business in in Russia. It's a Russian Federation. So and we we have to communicate with a certain uh, agency. Um, uh, let's say the, the, the API server, so, uh, some sort of the server and send the transaction data uh, over the internet. And the specification of this API uh, implies that we need to, we would need to sign the, the, uh, the request and the payload uh, via the uh, algorithm, which is actually very specific to, to, to Russia. Okay, so we are talking about the the GOST, so-called GOST family of ciphers. It's, it's a digital signature algorithm and symmetric encryption algorithm, maybe maybe something else. So, um, and because uh, yeah, the digital signature applies that you that you have this private key for it. And um, the question came up: Where do we store it? Right. So, as per our standard. Uh, encryption key management standard. It has to be kept in the corporate key management system, which is uh, um, uh, the product from Portanix, and and it didn't have this functionality at the time. So we we kindly requested Portanix to create this uh, functionality for us in the form of plugin, which they did, and it went very very well. So it works fine, um, and this specific business process. Uh, in, in, which is uh, yeah in, in the area of customs and, and logistics, I think. So at least this private key is is secured, uh, which is very important for us. Yeah, and I'll just uh, add to that for the benefit of the audience, the plugin functionality that we have allows you to write custom code in a language called Lua, um, and um, you can write your own scripts. And, and, and when you do that, uh, you can build access controller on that. And again, when you invoke it, you invoke it as a REST API and it runs inside uh, the, the secure enclave, uh, inside the secure execution environment that we have inside SDKMS. So your keys can still be protected. Um, but if you want to extend the REST APIs or the other libraries that we already provide, um, then it's a great way to do that by writing plugins. Uh, so going on, uh, moving on. Uh, so you, you are based in uh, in Germany, uh, in Europe, and uh, in Europe uh, we have heard a lot of things about uh, GDPR regulation and how uh, companies and enterprises are looking to uh, to, uh, to to adapt and uh, comply with GDPR regulation. Uh, in California, we have uh, our own regulation in the works called CCPA, uh, which will mimic uh, how we GDPR puts regulations around it. Uh, and uh, there are other organizations who are just standardizing their data privacy requirements around GDPR. Uh, so, so talk to us a little bit about uh, what are the challenges inside Adidas uh, for GDPR compliance and um, how is uh, STKM is helping you to address some of them? Um, yeah, G GDPR, of course, it's a big topic, and it was um, it actually of a big help to to uh, um, let's say typical security professional who whoever uh, promoting security in the organization because it's a push from really from the government perspective. So and so happens that if you just read the GDPR as such, uh, one of the few technologies that I mentioned there. Uh, is actually encryption. The, the, the law itself doesn't state that you have to encrypt the, the um, personal identifiable information, but it's just uh, um, uh, listed there as one of the technical and organizational controls that, that, are, uh, that the company must um, put in place, right? So, and this is what, exactly what we are doing. The GDPR as such is more about the process uh, that you would put in your company to determine where the personal identifiable information is, in what systems 
who, um, who is in charge of this data, who is creator, who, um, and so on and so forth. So maybe it's not a, a topic for today, but the Fortanix, um, so at the end of the, uh, at some phase of this pro process, you would need to apply those technical and organization controls that a company decided to do. And, and, and this is where Fortanix product would kick in, right? So, so um, Fortanix does help apply encryption to this PI data, um, just like, for example, we're using something else for logical access control for uh, logging and monitoring and so on and so forth. Sounds great. And uh, based on your experience so far, uh, would you recommend uh, STKMS to other companies similar to Adidas? Uh, I would definitely recommend to um, carefully assess your your specific scenario and the the organizational structure and the culture and the information security policy that you have in place, whether it mandates uh, usage of encryption. And then uh, it, it really, you, you, I suggest to make a selection uh, based on a certain criteria that you, you decide for yourself. And of course, look at, at Portanix amongst uh, a couple of others um, that would fulfill those criteria. Um, okay. And then um, run the, the, the proof of concept. All right, that's great. Uh, yeah, so that uh, uh, brings us to the end of the part two of the webinar. And thanks, Vladimir, for walking us uh, walking us through the journey of uh, how you started uh, on uh, looking for a solution for encryption and started looking for key management and and how your experience with Botanix has been so far uh, and how it's helping you solve some very specific uh, problems uh, uh, in the organization. Thanks for that. Thank uh, and with that, uh, we'll move. We'll move to the uh, to the final part of the of the webinar, where we'll take some questions from the audience. So let me go to the Q and A section to see if you have any questions. Uh, yes, the first question is: Do we have uh, a PowerPoint presentation for this session? Uh, so this uh, session uh, is recorded. So yeah, a version of this will be made available uh, to look at. Uh, second question, are you using SaaS or hardware? Uh, are you scaling on a global level? Uh, so maybe uh, from Fortanix side, the product is available um, as a, in multiple form factors. So it is available as SaaS, it is available as a software-only solution. The only requirement is that you need to be, bring uh, hardware which is uh, capable of uh, Intel SGX-based uh, CPUs. Uh, and the third option we have is uh, physical appliances or hardware. So maybe, uh, Vladimir, you want to answer this question? Um, I mean, we're we we are using um, Ortanix to cover, let's say, the, the big chunk, um, the big portion of our IT landscape and, and information systems, um, such as um, yeah, Oracle databases or MS SQL databases, all kind of relation databases and, and the other, other systems that, that do have, so to say, uh, embedded functionality for it, right? The, the, the functionality for encryption and key management provided by, by the vendor. So, uh, and this works extremely well. Um, if you would ask me, about the cloud and and where we would go, we should go there. Um, that's um, the topic for debate, and and uh, I'm not really convinced that it's a, it's a good idea. Maybe to you, if you have workloads in the cloud that process sensitive information, and and of course it's in plain because you have to compute on it. Uh, whether it's a good idea or not to to use the keys from on-prem to secure this data when it's stored in the cloud, that, that's really, uh, let's say, a, a point for debate. 
because in my opinion, yes, it's already there in in in, uh, in the cloud and plane, and uh, it's it's rather a question: what are we protecting against, right? So, if you want to scale this to towards the the cloud workloads, you just need to carefully assess your situ situation and scenario whether it makes sense or not. Yeah, I agree uh, with Vladimir. Uh, some cloud providers do provide bring bring your own key BYOK capabilities, uh, but uh, essentially what would make more sense uh, is if cloud providers let you use your key uh, as an external key management uh, interface where uh, it's not just BYOK, it could be more like a bring your own KMS where you can manage, you can have complete control of your keys even though you're running a workload in, in the cloud. That would be a more desirable model. So I have another question for you, Vladimir. Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. You want to add something to that? Oh, please. Yeah, another question for I you is, I just wanted uh, to say maybe, yeah, yeah, so, sorry, Anand. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, to comment on that uh, because it's really interesting when we often uh, talk internally about this. If you just look at the, the major uh, vendor scope or infrastructure as a service, right? We, we're talking Google Cloud Platform, Amazon, and, and, and Azure. Um, they they do have their own uh, cloud offerings for for KMS, and if if you look at the computing um, services and, and products, the these virtual machines or, or what have you, uh, and the block storage as well, it can be protected with encryption, but there there is no support for customer KMS. I mean. As far as I know, uh, the last time I looked at it, it's it's always connected uh, with this proprietary protocol, whatever it is, to the to the cloud uh, KMS of this particular uh, vendor. We off, uh, we see more and more uh, support for customer on-premise KMS uh, in 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 various um, software as a service solutions like. There's a big e-commerce provider in, from US that uh, developed some some functionality in in, in that area, and, and this is, could be interesting. But uh, again, it, it's kind of sacrifices a lot on availability because there is a um, yeah the the internet basically between the cloud and and uh, and the customer, and uh, whether it makes sense really to have the key on prem. Um, it, it's for me, uh, I, I'm not convinced at least. Yeah, sure, it's, uh, it's up for debate. Uh, and the question uh, for you, Vladimir, is uh, how happy you have been with the support and response from Photonix? Uh, and uh, dealing with small companies is always a factor to consider. Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, you have to protect yourself uh, with a solid uh, service level agreement, which is on, on, on paper there from the start. Uh, and don't leave it like this. Do a regular review, uh, like customer service review with, with your vendor uh, on, on the tickets, on uh, issues that happened in, in the previous period and provide the feedback. Um, it's, uh, we, we are satisfied so far uh, with, with the service that we, we, we consume, so to say. And of course, we wish um, our partners um, success and the growth uh, at the end of the day, because you know, this is how we succeed as well together. Great, uh, thanks uh, for that. Uh, uh, another question is, uh, does SDKMS support uh, single sign-on and uh, two-factor authentication? Uh, the answer is uh, yes, uh, it does support single sign-on. We support uh, integration using multiple protocols, so SAML, um, OAuth, uh, even LDAP and Active Directory. We support integration with all of them. Um, we also support two-factor authentication using uh, a U2, U2F standard, uh, which uh, is supported by multiple security keys like YubiKey or the Google Titan key. So we will support both of them. Uh, next question is, uh, how can SDKMS uh, secure my keys uh, in a public cloud? 
And I think uh, this is something we just uh, discussed. Uh, there are ways in which uh, the public cloud provider uh, provides either a BYOK capability or uh, a CMEC or a customer managed encryption key. Uh, but then uh, it's up for debate uh, how useful it is because once you have given your key uh, to the cloud KMS, uh, then you lose control. Uh, in my mind, uh, ideal solution for this would be uh, having some kind of an interface where it's, it's not just bring your own key, it's hold your own key uh, so that the customer can hold on to their own key and get better security uh, rather than giving the key to the cloud provider or a SaaS provider. Anything you want to add to that, Vladimir? Um, the, the hold your own key concept, it's, it's also interesting. Uh, it can uh, attempt to, to try the try to balance this, this um, yeah, security responsibility between, let's say, customer and, and, and the provider. It also implies, as far as I understand, is that you would need to transfer the, dat the data that, you, that is encrypted there in the cloud back to on-prem, decrypt it, and then send it back for computation, which is like, in some cases, it's completely unacceptable. So at the end of the day, yeah. It's, yeah, it's uh, it's there in the cloud, uh, uh, in plain text, in, in the computer memory, which is again owned by by the, uh, the cloud provider. So um, you definitely have to encrypt the data. Uh, maybe, uh, well, I, I would say, try to um, look at the application level. Uh, if 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 infrastructure doesn't help in that case. Uh, meaning that on an application level, you can you can develop a encryption model that that would leverage the keys on prem, that in a way that 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 is uh, fulfills your requirements. But then also it, it's very easy just to turn it on, the the encryption functionality in the cloud, which in the cloud which is there, uh, yeah, available at your service with the, with the KMS and the cloud itself. Yeah, the, the other option is uh, to use a technology like uh, SGX in the public cloud as well. Uh, so you can still, uh, and related to that, uh, if you have SGX in the cloud, you can also run SDKMS in the cloud. So for example, we have had uh, customers run uh, uh, SDKMS and deploy it on uh, other confidential cloud, and that's one place where you can get Intel SGX based virtual machines today. So if you run SDKMS in the cloud, there are other options like uh, uh, IBM Cloud, where you can rent a bare metal server, uh, which has SGX as well. So you can also run SDKMS in the cloud if you use uh, any of these methods. Uh, and then once uh, your application is consuming data, uh, then you can go forward and with the runtime encryption platform, you can also start running applications inside secure enclaves. And then you can make sure that the transfer of the keys from the key management service and the application happens over a secure channel and is used inside a secure enclave as well. Uh, next question is, uh, which, uh, with which certificate management solutions for Tanix SDKMS can be integrated? Uh, the answer is, uh, is any certificate management solution which uh, supports uh, standard interfaces like uh, PKCS11 um, or CNG. So we have tested uh, with uh, Microsoft uh, Active Directory uh, Certificate Services, ADCS, uh, which uses uh, the Microsoft CNG interface uh, to a cryptographic provider. And SDKMS does have support for that. Uh, there are other uh, certificate management solutions or CAs uh, such as uh, uh, Java EJ Beans, uh, EJ BCA, uh, as well as uh, uh, something from Cloudflare that we have tested, um, which use standard based uh, interfaces as well. Uh, next question is Can we have one more webinar for explaining what skills are required for developing an integration code in line with available Lua plugin? Yeah, definitely. So we can have a webinar, kind of a tutorial on how to use uh, Lua and uh, write a plugin to run inside a CKMS. Definitely it's something for the next, next set of webinars we'll, we'll have. Uh, next question is uh, Can you provide uh, more info? on secrets management. 
so one of the capabilities of STKMS, in addition to key management, is also around secrets management, where you can manage, uh, store, and retrieve uh, either static secrets like uh, passwords, uh, API keys, uh, certificates, and such. Uh, and there's also a way to have dynamic secrets where you can rotate uh, some of these secrets, uh, maybe store an AWS API key and set a schedule around how often it should be rotated. Uh, so you can do those things using a combination of uh, plugins that we have as well as um, a type of security objects called secrets. Uh, Vladimir, as far as I understand, you have not uh, tried this feature yet in the product? Uh, yes, we did. Actually, it's one of the features that, that uh, we, we are using in our developer community uh, uh, storing application secrets in, in SDKMS. As far uh, the, the last time I looked at it, it was uh, opaque, opaque objects uh, used for that. If you yeah. develop uh, specific, something specifically for secrets, that's, uh, yeah, that's news to me. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so the two types of secret objects uh, that we support one is opaque objects, another is a secret object. And the, the, there's a subtle difference where if you want to export the value of the secret object, uh, it gets um, audit logged if it is a secret object. Uh, but uh, you can do a simple get and put if it's an opaque object. Uh, so, so if something is even more secret than an opaque object, you would use a different type of secrets. Okay, so next question is what are the, what are the different uh, crypto interfaces uh, that STKMS supports? Uh, so STKMS supports uh, PKCS11. Uh, it supports uh, KMIP, uh, which is a modern interoperability pro protocol for key management. Uh, it supports uh, JCE uh, for Java crypto provider. It supports uh, Microsoft's uh, interfaces. CNG is the new interface. Uh, the old one is CAPI. Uh, we also support the Microsoft EKM, uh, which is a different interface, but specifically specifically built to integrate with uh, Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, and then we also have our own REST APIs, uh, which are documented on our support site, so developers can build towards the REST APIs as well. Uh, there are also SDKs available for in different languages to make it easy to make the REST API calls. So we have SDKs available in Java, Python, Golang, um, and some of the other languages as well. Uh, okay, so uh, there's a follow-up on the certificate management question. Uh, it was about uh, the question I answered was about integration with CAs, uh, but it looks like they're looking for integration with certificate management systems like uh, Winify, Key Factor, CSS, or AppViewX. Uh, again, this is where if uh, any of these certificate management systems, they use standards-based interfaces, uh, then uh, it should just uh, be straightforward to integrate with us. Um, if they are uh, not using standards-based interfaces, then there might be uh, a requirement to do some integration effort. I can maybe add to this that uh, at least one of these products, um, they, they, they have a backend database basically, uh, which is some sort of the SQL database, and the data there is encrypted um, um, with, with encryption key, which actually can be managed in, in an external key management system uh, using uh, standard functionality, standard driver again. So, by default, it's maybe stored in a, in a configuration file, but you can uh, you can adjust this uh, configuration for, uh, of the, the certificate management system to have it in external D, um, key management system. Um, yeah, we, which is one of the way maybe to integrate. Okay, great. So that uh, bring us, brings us to the end of this uh, webinar. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for participating. Uh, and thank you very much, uh, Vladimir, for joining us uh, and providing your perspective uh, on the problem space uh, and the solution uh, that we provide and how it's working for you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Anand. Thanks for having me. Sure. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.